NTUC Secretary General Ung Chi Meng says he has established enough credit with employer federations over the past five years to ensure a strong relationship moving forward. In a one-on-one -on -one interview with a CNA, Mr. Ung also talked about the Eagle Services Asia retrenchment saga, which could have led to the first strike in Singapore since 1986, as well as other vital conversations that the government should have with Singaporeans. Chloe Chu with more. Following GE 2020, I think many people were saying that, you know, with somebody who isn't in cabinet, this might actually weaken the NTUC's ability to help workers. Is there another way that you're going to be working with the cabinet moving ahead? Or would there be any differences from what you used to do last time? As a cabinet minister, of course, we make country policies as well. Now that I'm out of government, as sec gen, well, the feedback to government would remain just as direct. Uh, as a minister, maybe I would have more uh, access to companies where they would treat me also as part of government and maybe discuss things in a broader context with me. But I think I have enough credit with our employer federations and uh, build the trust over the last five years to know, for them to know that our labour movement is one that creates a win-win-win possibility for country for businesses and workers. And if NTUC continues to operate in that context, then I think the tripartite relationship will continue to flourish with very honest and very uh, direct discussions to deal with the hard issues. Regarding the entire Eagle Services saga, you actually authorised unions to take legal industrial action. Why were you prepared to take such drastic measures in a time like this? I mean, companies are also facing a lot of pressures amid the recession. Eagle Services was forthcoming in terms of the overall retrenchment package. But the process we felt was unfair and there's a lack of transparency. Which worker would be let go? So the whole process uh, was done in a very haphazard manner to the extent that when my union leaders were in the midst of discussion with management, workers were being let go. It broke a fundamental issue of trust in the process where workers that have worked 30 years or more in a company were given very last minute notice to just pack up and go. The dignity of the workers was not respected the due process of determining who may be the worker to let go was not uh, done in a fair manner. It caused a lot of ground unhappiness. NTUC had to step in to make sure that the workers' rights are protected. That is the fundamental reasons why I thought it is needed for NTUC to stand up together with our unions to protect the workers' interests. NTUC and our unions in our tripartite context play fair. We want our companies to succeed so that workers can be taken care of, whether in good times or in bad times. We want that long journey, the, the long relationship. And my primary responsibility as sec gen is to my workers and the interests of the unions and the labour movement. I think the right thing to do is as what I've articulated to you, regardless of whether I hold a cabinet position. How challenging has it been for the NTUC to sort of, you know, save workers and also ensure fair retrenchment deals without killing the companies? I know this is a very tough balance to try to achieve, but is there anything else the NTUC is doing in order to gain support from employers and also workers in order for them to understand why they are going through these pay cuts or reduced retrenchment benefits? Well, that's a very good question. Indeed, there is a very delicate balance between company success and workers' interests. I think our fair retrenchment framework put the priorities correctly in the sense that the Singaporean core should be protected first. And within this framework then, how do we actually get companies to access government grants, different possibilities to make sure that the companies remain viable. So this delicate balance uh, is maintained because the way that we run tripartism in Singapore, I have access to the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, even though now I'm no longer in cabinet, we meet regularly to actually feedback what are the ground situation for both companies and for workers. So the job support scheme in Parliament, when uh, in the last term of government, well, much of the feedback actually was from NTUC. Because we are close to the ground, we could give direct feedback. And 
tell the government what are the pressures that companies are facing. With this feedback, then they could design useful schemes, like job support schemes, to actually help with a major component of uh, cost for companies. Worst affected ones we know are aviation, so whether the government can continue some form of support for them, many a times it will be specific to each of the industries. If we take too long a time to wean off the companies from this support, then you may have detrimental effects as well. But if we remove support for good from good companies, then you have a, a major loss of a good company to support our Singapore economy for the future. So this uh, delicate balance would have to be studied very deeply and many a times on a case-by-case -case basis. So how long do you think the government should continue with JSS? You know, we've been talking a lot about balance today, but how is the NTUC going to sort of strike that balance between helping companies retain their workers and also ensuring that it doesn't backfire in a sense that you are helping zombie companies and trapping workers in unviable jobs? Well, this will be a non-government view now that I'm no longer in government. What I suggest for government to really think about if there's a company that is impacted by policy measures, perhaps we can think about extending JSS so that there is a balance that you are alluding to. But more importantly, for the overall health of each of the companies, I feel that the economy must be reopened with a balanced risk management between the health risks and the long-term economic impact to Singapore. When we first started out with COVID-19, the health risk was foremost in Singaporeans' minds because we don't know about the virus. After six months, we understand it that much better between the health risk and the economic impact. This would be a conversation that I think would be needed and NTUC will be quite happy to participate in this conversation to actually get a sense of where Singaporeans think we should find a sweet spot if there is one for managing these two conflicting risks. The reality of a second wave or a third wave, as you see the different societies open up, are very real. We will have to determine where do we want to manage the risks and where do we want to optimize our society. Not an easy uh, question to answer, but useful to have the engagement.